So far away, Brad, what's your favourite Mortal Kombat character? I'm going to go with Reptile. Reptile. He's the green one. Yeah. <laughs> How fitting. Oh, I just realised I've got the fact for your skeleton here. We could do like a... Like a shitty um, uh, fatality thing out of like, yes, you're gonna, you're oh god, I just realised. Fatality on the skeleton. I just realised like, that's not a, a thing. Was uh, the top of my water bottle was in his crotch, so like my skeleton had a penis. <laughs> I realised I could just do this like the sub zero of just like the head rip and just, and I was like I'm like ripping out a tiny skeleton. <laughs> there you go. The Mortal Kombat series is home to a number of eminently recognisable characters, including a pantheon of actual gods, a dickhead movie star who glows green, and a Shaolin monk who teleports via Razor Hat. They're, they're all real then, Brad. How long have you played Mortal Kombat? I've never played an actual Mortal Kombat game. I'm, I'm aware of it via you. <laughs> so I'm not making it like they are all actual characters in the Mortal Kombat series, but continue with my intro. In regards to the latter, the series is also home to another monk who is differentiated differenti differentiated <laughs> by his mullet. A mullet that the creators of the game made canon after the actor playing him refused to shave his head. So, Brad, you said you're not too familiar with Mortal Kombat, right? No, I, I played Tekken. I didn't play Mortal Kombat. Okay. Well, I would argue that the Mortal Kombat series has one of the most eclectic character casts of any fighting game. Because like you said you play Tekken. Yeah. And probably the craziest thing you get in Tekken is a bear who knows Mishima style karate <laughs> and yeah, whatever the fuck Yoshimitsu is, right? Yeah. And there's like a devil in there somewhere. But like Mortal Kombat is home to gods, ninjas. People who look like ninjas but explicitly aren't ninjas because Sub-Zero, despite looking like a ninja, is not a ninja, which he will tell you in-game. Let's get something straight. I am not a ninja. I am Lin Kuei. Scorpion was a ninja. He even says, like, the Lin Kuei are not ninjas. I'll put the clip in. Where's the ninja convention? Lin Kuei are not ninjas. So why dress like one? And we also have movie stars, um, uh, members of the military, um, the kid of a movie star and a member of the military because two of the characters end up dating and having a kid who has the same powers as the movie star which is the ability to glow green which he inherited from a Mayan death cult. That, that's canon to the story by the way. You also have several members of like interdimensional races including a half horseman. You have a half dragon, half shokan which is a like a race of like four-arm warrior monsters. You have um, uh, an actual cowboy from the 1800s who travelled to another dimension and becomes a bounty hunter. Not this fight again. You would prefer someone else. Hell, I'd fight a goddamn space cowboy. What do we have now? A blood mage who can teleport via the process of blood. Robocop, the Terminator, the alien, the predator, Freddy Krueger, Leatherface, and Jason from Friday the 13th are all in that game. Just, the question I have is how? Like, what's the law reason or is there not one? Do you know why, Brad? Because Mortal Kombat. I, it's because from what I'm aware, isn't it like a tournament and they all come together to fight? Yes, Mortal the titular Mortal Kombat is a tournament and in the first game, um, it's noted that the interdimensional like um, warlord Shao Kahn has won nine tournaments in a row. And the law is that if you win ten in a row, you get to merge the realms, which is what all the fighters of Earth realm, well, like your Liu Kang, who we're talking about today, your Johnny Cage, your Sub Zero, your Scorpion, they're all fighting against. Okay. And then they've reset the timeline twice, I think, because they realise, holy shit, this is getting complicated. So is it like any fighter from any realm can come and compete in the Mortal Kombat? Yes, and almost everyone in the Mortal Kombat games has a nebulously defined amount of superpowers. <laughs> if you think like Johnny Cage, being an actor, how is he going to fight a god? How is he going to fight like Onaga the Dragon King? And it's like, yeah, he's got superpowers. We don't know how much he's got superpowers, but he's got fucking superpowers. Just enough superpowers to not get killed in one hit. Yeah, like that's the in-universe explanation for why like characters like Johnny Cage can get hit by Shao Kahn. It does make the gods seem less impressive when everybody can fight. Well, no, it's just that the humans can fight on par with the gods. <laughs> also, if you're a god, you can still get punched in the fucking balls. Yeah. That's the best bit about Johnny Cage, of like, it doesn't matter how tough you are. It doesn't matter how tough you are, Goro. I can still punch you in the fucking nads. Let's dance.
everyone's got a weak spot between the legs. They have, yes. Yeah. Like the old package check <laughs> and they work from everybody. And that's one of the things I love about Mortal Kombat, that there's so much love and care and craft put into like their universe, despite how stupid it is. Like for example, the character of Sonya Blade, one of her signature moves is uh, the love dust, where she like blows dust into someone's eyes and it blinds the character for a few seconds, getting you a free hit. That doesn't work on the character of Kenshi because he's blind. <laughs> so that character is immune to that one specific attack and it's like, yeah, that, that does make sense, as stupid as it is. So that character has like a really good matchup against Sonya because that move doesn't work. Why is it called Love Dust? I don't, I don't know the actual name of it, but that's what I call it in my head. Like, there's a bunch of like, fan names for all the moves. I love Mortal Kombat, so he's so fucking stupid, but I love it. Is it Mortal Kombat that has the, was it, the Wazugi Yugi move? No, the Wazugi Yugi move is from Tekken. Tekken. So people maybe don't remember this old, this is an old, this is a deep pull from the earliest days of Fact Feed. The Wazugi Yugi move is what my dad called Kazuya's 10 hit combo in Tekken. And he practiced that in Tekken so he could beat me and my brothers at Tekken. Unstoppable. And like when you're a kid, if like someone does a 10 hit combo, they might as well be cheating. They might as well pull a gun out and shoot you. There's no fucking way you're beating a tenet combo with a child who doesn't understand like the idea of frame data and blocking. <laughs> there was always that one kid in your friend group who knew how the game worked. Yeah, and that kid was all four players. Yeah. So now I am that kid in my friend group, so no one plays fighting <laughs> games with me. Well, you're the one who plays with the fucking like you play Smash with the little tiny controller. Yeah, I play Super Smash Bros with the um, the left Joy-Con because I can as a flex. But let's bring it back to Mortal Kombat. So you said um, uh, you are familiar with the game via pop culture osmosis. So just tell me the characters you're familiar with. Uh, so I'm familiar with the, the general roster. Like you've got the ninjas, uh, apparently not Sub-Zero, but um, Scorpion is Sub-Zero and then Reptile was the colour change because we've done a lot of videos talking about this before. Um, and then the, uh, the, one, the few ones you mentioned. Is Sheng Long a Mortal Kombat thing? Uh, he is a Street Fighter thing. Right. He was a rumoured character who was going to be similar to Mortal Kombat. Well, he was a rumoured character that was going to be in Street Fighter, who um, uh, was like the master of Ryu and Ken, I think. I'm not too clued in on Street Fighter lore, but that was very Mortal Kombat-esque, because a lot of the early history of Mortal Kombat was fueled by rampant speculation from fans. Like, you mentioned Reptile. Yeah. Like, his existence was hinted at by fans for years. Like, do you know there's a secret third green ninja? So they went, well, that sounds cool. Let's make a third green ninja who's got the powers of Scorpion and Sub-Zero combined. And that's what Reptile did in the first game. He had like Scorpion's um, uh, Spear and Sub-Zero's Freeze, I think. But then they made him his own character. And same with the character of Ermac, who was um, a rumoured character to exist. He was a red ninja, and it was the word Error Macro, Ermac. Right. And that character didn't exist, but Ed Boon, um, one of the creators of uh, Mortal Kombat, I thought it was interesting, so created that character. And similarly, you had the character of Scarlet, who was a rumoured female red ninja, who was like in power, that had the powers of blood. And again, that character didn't exist, but they liked the idea of it, so they made Scarlet a real thing. And I love that just Mortal Kombat embraces the dumb stuff and the stuff from fans and the fan theories and makes them canon. Yeah, I love it when games do like, like the cow level. I can't remember which game it was, but there was a game where there was a rumored cow dimension or something. And um, the fans, like they were talking about it for ages, so the developers in the next one put it in. Yeah, I, I want to say that's Diablo, but we'll be... Uh, a uh, fact check done on that because I'm editing these now, so I've got to do it. I've got to fact check myself, damn it. Yeah, like, I love how willing they are with Mortal Kombat to so just, uh, uh, just basically tell fans like whether or not something is accurate. And there's this great video called like 50 Quick Questions with Ed Boon. And you can see him, George Lucas in it live on camera, <laughs> where he's being asked questions about the lore of Mortal Kombat, and he's just answering them on the fly and making it canon right there and then. Do Johnny Cage's fans know that he's killed just like dozens and dozens of people at this point? No, he, he keeps that to himself. Are there other religions on Earth, or does everybody <laughs> just worship the Elder Gods at this point? Does everybody know that they exist? No, not everybody knows they exist. Can you just officially make the call on which faction or clan won in Mortal Kombat X? Let's go with the Black Dragon. Really? Why is that? They'd probably cheat at the end of the day and end up winning. <laughs> Why don't more fatalities involve butt stuff? <laughs> um, because the game wouldn't sell. I mean, we know it's not a great uh, thing to do that for your universe. There's other examples that I'm not going to go into. Yeah, but I just love that Ed Boon doesn't give a shit because the Mortal Kombat universe, it feels 
When I, when I described it as it was then and told you all the different characters that are in it, it sounds so stupid, but it really does fit. Like when I'm on the character select screen for Mortal Kombat 11 and I see like Aaron Black, who's an actual cowboy, kicking the fuck out of Robocop, might it makes perfect sense. I don't question this at all. Yeah, of course Robocop's fighting this cowboy. <laughs> of course, like, you know, Scorpion's coming in for the assist. That makes perfect sense. It's Mortal Kombat. Like, they get away with it just because they've always been willing to embrace how dumb the series is. And nothing epitomizes that more than for the release of, I think, like, the DLC, like, story conclusion for Mortal Kombat 11. They just played the song. Oh, the, the song. <laughs> Is it possible that the past and future are colliding? And you're like, yes, finally, after two decades of pretending that song doesn't exist. Yeah, any other series that have been embarrassed, like the Power Rangers reboot, when they put it in for one little slow walk, and yet... No, celebrate it. The fans love it. Put it in. It's like, have you seen the recent trailer? It's not going to be recent for when people watch this, but for us, the recent trailer for the Super Mario Bros. movie where they play the theme song from the 90s cartoon. Yes, and they got an old voice actress back as well. Yes, they got Princess Peach's voice actor. It's like, the only thing you haven't drained is my bank account. <laughs> huh? Thank you, Super Mario Bros. It seems like the only thing you haven't drained is my bank account. <laughs> it's like, yes, they're acknowledging it. It's so good. Well, like, you know, bring it back, you know, the characters that you're aware of, you mentioned, like the two ninjas. Um, uh, what about the human characters? What human characters are you aware of? But, uh, yeah, and then you mentioned Liu Kang earlier as well. Yes, um, and he's the one we're talking about today. Um, but Liu Kang um, uh, is like the partner character to uh, Kung Lao, and uh, they are both Shaolin monks now characters. And Kung Lao is the more traditional Shaolin monks. He has like the bald head. Um, he has like the way more respectful way of talking about it. He's very mysterious, very quiet. He has like you know, the robes, like the hat. I guess he's not very Shaolin monk esque, especially when he's got like razor blades on it. But if you take off the hat, he looks like what you'd expect a traditional monk character, quote unquote, to look like. Yes. If you're just like Google Kung Lao now, just so you know, get like familiarize yourself with his design. Yeah, Kung Lao, let's have a look. Oh, of course, yeah. The. Uh... Yeah. Disc hat, but you I take the that. hat off, it looks like a traditional Shaolin yeah. monk. But you don't look at Liu Kang, what do you see when you look at Liu Kang? Uh, well, the long hair stands out. And, and those luscious locks of Liu Kang is what we're talking about today, because Joy said, like, Mortal Kombat's not afraid to make dumb stuff canon. Yeah. That's kind of what happened here. So, do you know, like, the early Mortal Kombat games was done with digitized actors? Yeah, they got the actual actors in to pause for the particular move sets and then yes. use those in the games. And we could talk about that all day because there's a bunch of like interesting like factoids and stuff about that, such as like a, a, a big argument about rights because they changed the actor for a couple of the characters like in between games because the actors weren't getting paid properly. And there's a whole bunch of like you know legal nonsense that went on there. But in particular, we're talking about one actor today, and that's the actor who played Liu Kang, Ho Sung Pak. So obviously, to do this, they would have all had to dress up in the characters' costumes. Yes, and there was like some stuff that was achieved via special effects, like the character of Goro was not played by a person, that was like a <laughs> toy they made, that they just like literally moved around with their hands and dragged and dropped him onto the screen, and they like the special moves, they were like, you know, added in after the fact, but for the most part, um, everything you see in those early Mortal Kombat games was just the actors wearing costumes, and like, as you mentioned, there's some great behind the scenes stuff. And that's what made the game so iconic and in some circles so infamous because it's real people, like, you know, real quote unquote people being yeah. violently murdered on screen. And uh, because you didn't play the first game, you probably aren't aware of the fact that there's only one character in that base roster of seven people who couldn't kill anybody. And that character was Liu Kang. So one of the roster didn't actually have a fatality. Like he did have a fatality, but when you input the buttons for it, you just uppercutted the opponent. So he was the only one in that base game that didn't have a fatality that explicitly killed his opponent. Liu Kang wins. Flawless victory. Fatality. Which makes sense. However, the character of Liu Kang didn't exactly conform to the stereotypical look of a Shaolin monk. Like, you know, he had some of like, you know, the traditional garb you'd associate with it, but he had, you know, that power metal mullet. And that's because the actor who played him, Ho Sung Pak, just absolutely steadfastly refused to shave his hair. As as he should have done. <laughs> that's like, like scroll, scroll down the original article, Brad, and look at that guy's mullet. 
I wouldn't touch that. And according to um, uh, one of the co-creators of Mortal Kombat, John Tobias, when he came in and I told him, look, you're going to be playing Liu Kang. Here's, here's the character you're going to play. He's a Shaolin monk. Uh, we're going to need you to shave your head, obviously. He just went, no. I have hair. I have hair! I have hair! Look! Look! <laughs> but Shaolin monks shave their head and Ho Sung Pat's like, nope. Not shaving my head. So they're like, well, are you sure? It's like, yep, not shaving my head. It's like, well, okay, sure, you can be Liu Kang. You can have hair, even though it's going to be weird for a Shaolin monk to have hair. And this is where, like, writing the dumb stuff into the story comes in because like, they were kind of annoyed behind the scenes that, like, they had the Shaolin monk character, he didn't kill anybody, but he had that hair. And even though nobody really gave a shit, it annoyed them behind the scenes. So what they did is they rewrote Liu Kang's backstory to say that he wasn't just a Shaolin monk. He was a Shaolin monk who'd rebelled against his order. <laughs> and he, as a sign of his rebellion, he grew his hair out and styled it into a mullet. Oh, I, I actually really like that. Now, see, isn't that a really neat character? Why does Liu Kang have a mullet if he's a monk? It's like he's rebelling and it's like, you know, as a sign of his rebellion, he grows his hair out and he has the mullet. And it's like, oh, re rebellion mullet. It's like, it fixes the problem and makes it cooler. And that's why they ended up introducing the character of Kung Lao. So they'd have like a more traditional style, like Shaolin monk character, but they put their Mortal Kombat S twist on it by giving him the razor hat. So, because that's something Mortal Kombat always does. Imagine if the guy that got in for the next one was like, I don't want to, I don't want to shave my hair off either. <laughs> Every single time they get a monk in. <laughs> He just wants to have different hair. Oh, we're just gonna have to hire a bald guy to play a monk. It's like, but we keep... <laughs> and as you mentioned, that makes the character of Liu Kang really interesting. Because, like, you know, it was pretty common back then when you're making fighting games to just make generic stock character archetypes, wasn't it? Like, how many fighting games have, like, just the Bruce Lee equivalent? <laughs> That's why I think Mortal Kombat has always done so well with like, you know, just a general audience because it's not afraid to make the weird, interesting characters. Like even like their most basic archetypes of like the ninja. Like the ninja is such a basic fucking character archetype for a fighting game. Their ninjas all have something that differentiates them. Like they control an individual element. against you. Only I control the rain, Sub-Zero. When rain freezes, it becomes ice. So even like their most basic stock characters have something about them that makes them stand out while they're not at all. But didn't you say even that came from like coming up with law reasons for just palette swapping one ninja? Yep. Like, because they realised, um, uh, well, every character in Mortal Kombat 1 has basically the same fighting style. They're only differentiated by the special moves. And there's not enough memory to put another full character in. But we can put in another set of special moves and just drag and drop it onto another existing character. So they just palette swap Scorpion and made him blue and just made them enemies. And they even end up writing that into the lore. Because, do you know what I said, like, um, uh, Sub-Zero is not um, a ninja. Do you know why in Mortal Kombat canon, Sub-Zero and Scorpion wear the same outfit? Aren't they brothers? It's not that they're brothers, it's that I forget which order it is, because it's been a while since I looked this up, so be, again, there'll be a fat bar below just telling people which one it is, but it's like the Lin Kuei and the Shirayu, which is um, Sub-Zero's clan and Scorpion's clan, hate each other and end up styling their outfits to look like the other as a mocking jab at them. So they dress the same as a piss take. And, and bring it back to Mortal Kombat, the fact that they wrote in an explanation for why Sub-Zero and Scorpion wear the same outfit, despite as the, you know, the games continue and the story became more elaborate, them being from completely different parts of the world, because Scorpion is Japanese and Sub-Zero is Chinese. Ugh. I was like, but why is this Chinese character dressing like a fucking ninja? Hey, so I'm just interrupting the video to um, just inquire something of you, our audience. If you're watching this, chances are you like Mortal Kombat. Um, and if you like Mortal Kombat, maybe you like playing Mortal Kombat. And if you like playing Mortal Kombat, 
maybe you're pretty good at Mortal Kombat and you'd like to uh, play some Mortal Kombat with other people who are quite good at Mortal Kombat and potentially earn some money playing Mortal Kombat. Well, if that just so happens to describe you, you can do so at the links below because I am helping run, host and organise a Mortal Kombat 11 tournament with a fellow content creator due to a confluence of uh, um, things too complicated to get into here but will also be explained in a link you can find below. But yeah, if you want to play some Mortal Kombat, earn some money for it or just support um, such an endeavour because it's something I'm personally quite passionate about and I'm looking forward to seeing um, how big an event I can help run. Um, yeah, check out the links below and if you want to play and be sponsored by Fact Fiend or Big Wang Link Incorporated, reach out to me at the socials you can also find below because I'd be interested in doing that too. The event should be happening sometime in late April 2023, so if you're watching this after the fact, you better find the archives, presumably again, somewhere linked below. I'm the only one running stuff behind the scenes now, so I'm going to have to figure that out, but yeah. Cheers, and that's for content. I mean, I guess if things are going to not make sense, you have to just add... It's like, I, I feel like it's one of those games where they'll just keep adding lore until everything and nothing makes sense. And that's why I love it so much. Like, never forget that it is Mortal Kombat canon that Sub-Zero died and got replaced by a character called Sub-Zero. Oh, God! I... I remember you telling me about this. Yeah, like the, the Sub-Zero in the first and I think second games is not the Sub-Zero that's in later games. That's his brother who's also called Sub-Zero. And they eventually, it wasn't until Mortal Kombat 11, they established that Sub-Zero is a mantle. It took them like <laughs> 10 games. And the way they revealed that is through character-specific matchups. If you make Sub-Zero fight Sub-Zero, you can randomly get a voice line where it's like, Grandfather, yes, earn my mantle. Because <laughs> um, in Mortal Kombat 11, every theoretical matchup is actually a dream match that hasn't actually happened. It's just a potential what if if it did. Oh my god, they don't need lore for that. It's just a, it's a game. No, that's the thing, but they did put it in. And if you match characters against each other, like, you know, the same character fighting themselves, like, there's multiple different explanations for what is actually going on um, to highlight the fact it's a what if. Like sometimes if you make Sub-Zero fight Sub-Zero, he's fighting his granddad. Other times he's fighting his brother before he becomes noob support. Other times it's just they've been cloned and it's like, oh, what the fuck? It's so good. It just, it feels a bit too far now. Like, you know what, I, I, like I like I, it. It just, I fucking love it. Because it's Mortal Kombat. Yippee-ki-yay, right? <laughs>